Hello. Hello, teacher. Hello, Hi, teacher. Aldo. Hi, Luis. How are you today? I have a good day. Awesome. You have a good day. Muy bien. Okay, it's just two, but yes, it is time to start. I hope that you have had a good day today and that you have been working in the platform. Did you check the topic for today? Or did you... Uh... No veo a Luis, se puso gris, será que se fue. Ah, ya Luis, <laughs> okay. ¿Sí? Yes, I Hay think no. Uh -huh. que se había desconectado. Ok, uh, no sé si tuvieron lugar de ver la presentación. Se las mandé un, unos minutitos antes de la clase. It is about uh, today's topic. So, vamos a empezar la sección 4. Como ya les había mencionado, ayer terminamos la sección 3. Y vamos ahora a empezar con la cuatro. No sé si ya tuvieron eh, eh, tiempito, oportunidad de revisar el contenido de la sección cuatro. No. Yes. Ahora sí, no. <laughs> okay, so the topic is basically the simple past. Básicamente es solo acerca del pasado simple. And it is, did you have fun? Empezamos con esa pregunta. Did you have fun? So we're going to start with vocabulary. Okay, and the vocabulary for this one is the top eight things people hate to do. Okay, that's the vocabulary, just to talk about some uh, regular activities. Let's watch the video. Just let me share sound with you. And let's play that one. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary for talking about things that people hate to do. Let's get started by listening and practicing. One. Stand in line. 2. Do laundry. 3. Travel to work. 4. Go to meetings. 5. Exercise. 6. Work in the yard. 7. Clean the house. 8. Open the mail. Now, I would like for you to practice this vocabulary by describing if you do these things or not. For example, I have to do laundry every weekend. I hate it. I don't have to clean the house. Besides putting this vocabulary into practice, I would also like for you to describe what other things you hate to do and why. After you finish this activity, Share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, uh, we were here. And the suggested activity is to describe what of these things we have to do. But before that, I would like to know if you have any questions about this vocabulary, uh, meaning or pronunciation. No questions. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, modeling the activity and then you're going to do the same. I don't have to stand in line. I have to do the laundry. I don't have to travel to work. I have to go to meetings. I, I have to exercise. I have to work in the yard. Sometimes I have to clean the house and 
I don't have to open the mail. What about you, Luis? Your microphone is off. The things uh, hate I hate or or I have I have uh, things you have to do and things you don't have to do or uh, well in this case it can be like hate. Creo que sería más indicado decir hate. For example, I hate to yes. stand in line. Yes, I, I hate a certain line. What about laundry? I, I don't hate to do the laundry. I have a washing machine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what about travel to work? I hate to travel to work. Yes. You? Uh, me too. What about uh, go to meetings? ¿Qué hay de ir a las reuniones? ¿Odia o no odia ir a reuniones? Yes. I hate to go to meetings. Yes. I had to go to a meeting. Okay, number five, exercise. Number five, exercise. I, I love, <laughs> I love the exercise. Okay, so you don't hate to exercise. Okay. Work in the yard? Work in the yard is very interesting. I... I am working in the yard. Okay. Uh, what about clean the house? Clean the house. I I have. Hate to clean the house. Okay. You hate to clean the house. What about open the mail? Uh, I have open, open the mail. Okay, good. What about you, Eduardo? Uh, yes. Ajá, uh -huh. tenemos que decir eh, odio hacer esto. I hate to stand in line. Y si no odia estar parado haciendo cola, sería I don't hate to stand in line. I have a uh, thing in life. Mm -hmm. uh, Continue uh, with number two. I, I have the, the laundry. Um, I, I don't have travel to work. Um, I have go to meet them. Number um, five. Um, I have uh, to um, exercise. Mm, uh, I don't work in the jar. Uh, I don't clean on the house. Uh, I I don't open the mail. Okay, thank you so much. Angelica? Hi, I hate standing line. I hate food and laundry. I don't hate travel to work. I don't hate go to meetings. I don't hate exercise. Mm, I don't hate work in the yard. I hate clean the house. And I don't hate open the mail. 
Okay, excellent job, Angelica. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, what about you, Salvador? Salvador. Hi. Um, me acabo de conectar y no, no entiendo, teacher. Solo uh, con el vocabulario que tenemos ahí es de expresar si odiamos o no odiamos hacer estas cosas. Por ejemplo, si yo odio estar parada haciendo cola, tendría que decir I hate to stand in line. El eh, hacer la lavada, en mi caso yo no, no es algo que odie, lo hace la lavadora. So I say I don't hate to do laundry. Y así sucesivamente con las demás actividades. Ok, entonces tengo to eight things. Sería el comienzo. To eight things. Uh, top eight things people hate to do es el vocabulario. Las, las, el top ocho de las cosas que las personas odian hacer. Ok. Oh, oh. Eh, eh, Salvador, eh, ¿a usted le gusta hacer colas? ¿Estar parado haciendo colas? Uh, no. Entonces no, no. sería I hate, yo odio. I hate to stand in line. Ah, ok. I hate to do stand in line. Ok. I hate to stand. Después de to vamos a decir el verbo que está acá. Ah, ok. I, I hate, hate to. Uh -huh. I hate to. Stand in line. Okay, muy bien. What about do laundry? I hate to do, I hate to laun, do laundry. Okay, very good. What about travel to work? Okay, I, uh, I hate to, to do travel to work. I hate to travel to work. Okay. What I about? To, uh huh. I hate to do as uh, go to meetings. Meetings. I hate to go to meetings. Okay. What about exercise? Okay. I hate to do exercise. Okay. Work in the yard. Okay. I hate to do. Work in the yard. Clean the house. Okay. I hate to do clean the house. I hate to do open the mail. Okay, thank you so much. Well, that is vocabulary that is going to help us with the next thing as probably we're going to uh, discuss this vocabulary later. But now, vamos a ver ya lo que sí es en sí el tema, el topic del simple past. So let me share my screen with you. And we're going to watch the video, pay attention to it, and then we're going to explain a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn to form positive and negative statements in the simple past using regular verbs. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, I didn't study. Let's listen and practice. Hi Jennifer, did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend, and I feel a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped. And then I visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh, no. Do we have a test today? I didn't study. I just watched television all weekend. Let's get started by practicing these statements in the past. Simple past statements. Regular verbs. I studied on Sunday. I didn't study on Saturday. You watched television. You didn't watch a movie. She stayed home. She didn't stay out. 
We shopped for groceries. We didn't shop for clothes. They exercised on Saturday. They didn't exercise on Sunday. Didn't equals did not. Spelling. Watch. Watched. W a t c h e d. Exercise. Exercised. E x e r c i s e d. Study. Studied. S t u d i e d. Stay. Stayed. S t a y e d. Shop, shopped, S H O P P E D. Let's analyze the examples on the chart now. I would like to get started with positive statements. Before I start, though, I would like to point out the verbs towards the right-hand side of the chart. When talking about the past, and if we're using regular verbs, we will follow a quite simple rule. We need to change the verbs to the past tense, and we can do this by simply adding ed. For example, the verb watch. We will change it to the past by simply adding ed. On a different class, we'll learn how to pronounce these verbs and also the spelling rules. Let's go back to making positive statements in the past tense. In order to make positive statements in the past tense, we will follow this formula. Subject plus verb in the past tense plus complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples now. I studied on Sunday. First, we will add the subject I. Next, we will include the verb in the past tense. Finally, we will put a complement on Sunday. Let's analyze one more example now. You watch television. First, we will add the subject you. Then we need to include the verb in the past tense. Finally, we will add the complement television. Let's learn how to make negative statements in the past. In order to make negative statements in the past, we can follow this formula. Subject plus didn't plus verb in the present plus complement. Notice that in this case, we include an auxiliary verb, didn't. And because we have this auxiliary verb, we will no longer change the verb to the past tense. Let's analyze a couple of examples. I didn't study on Saturday. First, we will add the subject I. Next, we will include the auxiliary verb to make negative statements didn't. After that, we add the verb in the present tense, study. Finally, we will add the complement on Sunday. Let's analyze one last example. You didn't watch a movie. First, we will add the subject you. Next, we will include the auxiliary verb to make negative statements, didn't. After that, we add the verb in the present tense, watch. Finally, we will add the complement, a movie. Now it's your turn to practice making positive and negative statements in the past tense. I would like for you to use all the verbs on the right-hand side of the chart and provide similar examples about yourself, family, friends, and coworkers. For example, I watch television on Monday. I didn't exercise on Monday. My friend didn't stay home 
on Saturday, she shopped for clothes. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, what do you think about the video? Is it easy? Was it difficult? What did you understand from it? What are your comments? No comments about the video? It, it, it's for bear irregular. So. Okay. Anybody else? No? No. Okay, so um, I guess it is easy for you. If it is easy, well, I think that we can cover this fast. So we're it going is. to... Hmm? It is, is easy. Okay, nice. So let's go little by little with the video. So the first thing that we have here is the conversation. Let's play the conversation. And after that, you're going to role play. Okay, as you said, it's easy. It's going to be a piece of cake then. All right, here we have the conversation that you just heard. So I'm going to play it a couple of times so that you can listen first and then you're going to repeat. After that, you're going to role play this in pairs. Page 92, exercise two, conversation. I didn't study. Listen and practice. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend, so I'm a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped. And then I visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh, no. Do we have a test today? I didn't study. I just watched TV all weekend. Questions about pronunciation or vocabulary with this? The pronunciation for the verb in past uh, visit, it will be visited. Visited, okay. It's like id sound, visited. 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 Uh huh. Any okay. other question? The verb tired? Tired. Tired. Mm -hmm. Any other?
Okay, so okay? shopped. Es como T sound at the end. Shopped. Shopped. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to play it one more time. And after that, you're going to role play. Page 92, exercise two, conversation. I didn't study. Listen and practice. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend, so I'm a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped. And then I visited my parents. So what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh, no. Do we have a test today? I didn't study. I just watched TV all weekend. Well, you have the conversation and the PowerPoint presentation that I sent a couple of minutes before the class. If you're not able to see it, is it, this is a good time for you to take a screenshot of the conversation because we are going to go ahead and practice it in groups. Let me create the breakout rooms for you. It's going to be just two rooms. Okay, we're going to join the rooms and practice this conversation. ¿Qué es la conversación? Eh, sí, le voy a tomar un screenshot y la comparto. Ok, ok, perfecto. Okay. A ver, vale. ¿Se ve? Eh, no, ah, ahorita sí, correcto. Ok, excelente. Comenzamos. Soy Jason. ¿Quién empieza? Comienzo yo, si quieren. Jason. Okay. No, okay, no okay. okay. Hi, Amy. Did you have a good weekend? Well, I had a busy weekend, so I am a little tired today. Really? Why? Well, on Saturday, I exercise in the morning. The, mar the mirror comments. Then my roommate and cleaned, did laundry and shopping, 
and visited my parents. So, what did you do on Saturday, on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh, no. Do we have a test today? I didn't study. I just watched TV all weekend. A <laughs> carcero. pronunciación. <laughs> Ok, ok, bueno, de todas formas estamos aquí para aprender Eso, sí, sí. correcto Ok, Luis uh, Hi, uh, Amy Do you have a good, uh, good weekend? Well, I have a busy weekend So, I am a little tired today Really? Why? Well, on Saturday I exercised in the morning Then my roommate and I cleaned it, did laundry and shop it, and the vis I visited my party. Uh, so, what did you do on Sunday? I studied for the test all day. Oh no. Do we, do we have a test today? I, I don't study. I just watch TV all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, remember that you're doing a very good job. Están haciendo un muy buen trabajo. Solo hay unas cositas con la pronunciación. Los verbos regulares nunca vamos a pronunciarlos como ed al final. Mm -hmm. Por ejemplo, okay. si sí, esos no nunca se pronuncian con ed. Son tres, eh, tres sonidos diferentes. Es, el, es como sonido de al final, que es como, por ejemplo, quiero ver, quiero ver. Watch, weekend. Uh, watch, ese watch. es sonido T al final. Ese watch. no decimos watch, watch it, it, sino que decimos watch. Watch, watch. ok. Igual okay. el verbo shopped. Shop, shop. ok. Ajá, y, y luego. Exercised es como con D, exercised. Ah, okay. Exercise. Ah, okay. Ajá, cleaned. 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 Ajá, very good. Cleaned. Cleaned. Y creo que estaba studied. Es una como id. Ajá, studied. 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 Ajá. Vamos a, creo que si no mañana o pasado vamos a ver, eh, a enfocar la pronunciación. Pero por ahorita nos vamos a quedar solo con los verbos que están ahí en la conversación. Y todavía tienen chancecito de seguir practicando. Voy a ir a ver el otro grupito. Ok. okay. Sí. Solo invertimos hey. los papeles entonces. Sí, claro, démosle. Ok. Yes. Eh, um, Amen. Amen. Ese es Amen. Ese es Well. Oh, Well. Quizás por las comas. ¿Y por qué es más largo? Eh, eh, ¿Cómo pero... nos está yendo? Perdón que los interrumpa. Estaba viendo el otro grupo. ¿Ustedes cómo van? Um, sí, eh, nos cuesta un poco el tema de, las, de Amen, que es un poco larga. Sí, eh, cuando es. Ah. Cuando es eh, la parte de Amy, el web on Saturday, eh, decía el compañero de que le cuesta un poco porque son, tiene, tiene varias. Exacto. Ok, vaya. Um, siempre pregunten que para eso estamos y de verdad que con gusto le vamos a ayudar en lo que sientan que hay dificultad. No tiene que darles pena preguntar. Eh, no tienen que sentirse mal porque están aprendiendo. Entonces, si hay algo que les dificulta, pues para eso estamos como facilitadores, para ayudarles. Y uh, permítanme que veo que hay alguien que no se asignó. Gustavo acaba de entrar. ¡Ay, se fue! <ríe> Dios, quizás no vio a nadie en la mira y sí, se asignó. seguro. Ok, so, vaya con los verbos que terminan en ED. El pasado simple con los verbos regulares, la pronunciación no es ed, 
por ejemplo, donde dice, um, quiero ver cuál es el primero acá. Uh, exercised. No vamos a pronunciar exercised. Uh, ese es the exercised in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry and shopped. Ese shopped no suena shopped, sino que es como conté al final, shopped. Okay. Shopped. And then, el visited es id. Id. I visited my parents. A ver, yo, yo, lo, yo lo manejaba diferente. Uh, cuando, cuando decimos exercise, yo lo, lo relacionaba a, al final, en lugar de ed, es como una sd. Exercise. Exercise. Uh -huh. Es decir, sin, pronun sin pronunciar la e. Es correcto. Ajá, la E no suena ahí. Exercised. Es decir, en, en, to, en todos eh, los verbos o en únicamente en, es, en específico. Ajá. So, eh, hay, hay unos, hay un par que la pronunciación final es id. Por ejemplo, visited and studied. Sí. Suena como id al final. Visited, studied. Started. Uh, no, ajá, uh -huh, started. Esa es no started. Id. Started. Igual, visited. Visited. Uh -huh. Es, es y... como, como no pronunciar la E y sí darle la entonación de la letra D. Ajá, uh -huh. no se pronuncia, pero por ejemplo en shop, como les decía, ahí no suena tampoco la D. Suena como si después de las P hubiera una T de tomate. Shopped. 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 Ajá. And I shopped. Lo de la pronunciación creo que lo vamos a ver mañana. Ahorita cuando va a sonar como T, cuando va a sonar como D y cuando va a sonar como ID. Eso lo vamos a ver mañana. Okay. Ahorita es importante que no pronunciemos como ed, no digamos visited, no digamos shopped, porque eso es incorrectísimo. Ok. Muy bien, vamos a intentar, me decían que la parte de Amy, que él es bien larga, se les hace un poco difícil. La clave es hacerlo primero, haciendo las pausas un poco prolongadas, como decir, well, on Saturday, I exercise in the morning, then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry, and shopped, and then I visited my parents. Y luego pueden hacerlo siempre respetando las pausas, donde hay coma, donde hay punto, pero no quedarse tanto tiempo ahí parado, ¿verdad? Well, mm -hmm. on Saturday, I exercised in the morning, then my roommate and I cleaned, did laundry and shopped. Then I visited my parents. Okay. okay. Y recuerden que la conversación también está en la plataforma y pueden practicarla las veces que sea necesario. Así como les decía, pueden ir pausando y hacerlo despacito. Pero pues okay. ahorita podemos repetir juntos. Antes de que terminemos sí. el tiempo, podemos repetir todos juntos. Pueden dejar el micrófono encendido. That's okay. Let's repeat. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Did Hi, you Amy. have a good weekend? Did you have did a good weekend? Have a good weekend. weekend? Uh -huh. Vamos a unir el did you. Did you have a good weekend? Did you, did have, you a have, weekend? have a good did weekend? Mucho mejor. Well, I had a busy weekend. Well, I had well, a busy weekend. I a busy weekend. weekend. So I'm a little tired today. 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 Muy bien, excelente. Repitieron justo uniendo el I am con el uh, I'm a little, I'm a little tired today. Muy bien. Really? Why? Really? Why? 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 
Well, on Saturday, I exercised in the morning. Well, well on Saturday, Saturday, I exercised in, in, in the morning. Then my roommate and I cleaned. Then my roommate and I cleaned. Then my roommate and my cleaned. Did laundry and shopped. Did laundry, did laundry, laundry and, and shopped. And, and then I visited my parents. And then and I, then I and visited then I visit my parents. parents. So what did you do on Sunday? So what did you so do, what did you do uh, on Sunday? Uh, I studied for the test all day. Studied for the test I all day. I studied for a test all day. Oh no, we do have a test today. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Do we have, we have a test today? I didn't study. I didn't study. I, didn't study. I just watched TV all weekend. I just, I just watched watch TV all weekend. A weekend. All right. How do you feel today? How do you feel today? Mejor. Okay. <laughs> bueno, les queda de tarea entonces seguir practicando, eh, escuchar y así como lo hicieron ahorita, tomándose su tiempo, eh, hacer la pausa y luego ya repetir. Ok. Ok. So, see you in, in session. Good, so let's continue. Creo que ya están todos acá. Yes, all right. So let's move. Vamos a lo siguiente que vimos también en la plataforma, que era ya en sí lo que es la gramática. And here we are. Okay, here is the simple past statement with regular verbs. Son dos partes, la parte con los regular y la parte con los irregulars. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Un regular y un irregular. Do you happen to know the answer? No. Por, por mí es la, la forma de, de hacer, de convertirlo al pasado. ¿sí? Ajá, por ahí anda cerquita. Es la forma en que se convierten a pasado. Los que son regulares siguen una regla. Una que nos dice si el verbo tiene así, tienen que hacer así y hay un grupo de verbos que entran en esa regla, como las excepciones. Pero los irregulares no hay una regla que nos indique. Ellos cambian totalmente de un tiempo a otro en cuanto a escritura. En cambio, estos eh, siguen la regla de que mayormente se les agrega ED para formar el pasado simple. Esto también obedece a unas reglas de spelling que son las que están acá. Ok, so si el verbo termina en E, por ejemplo, como el caso de exercise, no le vamos a meter otra E y le vamos a poner D. No, si terminan en E, pues simplemente se agrega nada más la consonante D. Y así vamos a, a ir estudiando cada excepción o cada regla para hacer la conjugación del simple pass with um, regular. Vamos a escuchar, este es el mismo audio que escucharon en la plataforma y luego vamos a explicar un poco más sobre esto. Quiero ver. Acá. Page 93, Exercise 3, Grammar Focus. Simple Past Statements, Regular Verbs. I studied on Sunday. I didn't study on Saturday. You watched TV. You didn't watch a movie. 
She stayed home. She didn't stay out. We shopped for groceries. We didn't shop for clothes. They exercised on Saturday. They didn't exercise on Sunday. Didn't equals did not. Spelling. Stay, stayed, S T A Y E D. Watch, watched, W A T C H E D. Exercise, exercised, E X E R C I. S E D Study Studied S T U D I E D Shop Shopped S H O P P E D All right, so for a simple past statement, what do we have here? Uh, whenever we are making a simple past statement, we have to conjugate the verb into the simple past. In the case of regulars, we add ed to most of them. And for some other cases, we have to follow the spelling rules. If they are uh, negative statements, we use the auxiliary did not, which is didn't in contracted form, and we leave the verb in the infinitive form. Is this clear? Estamos claros con esto? Is that clear for you? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's clear. Yes. Okay, so. Whenever uh, a verb stay Y and before Y we have a um, vowel, in this case, we just add ED. Uh, for most of the verbs, we just add ED, but when the verb ends in the um, vowel E, so we just add the consonant D. If before Y we have a consonant, we add, uh, change the Y to I and add ED, right? So for verbs such as shop or verbs with uh, just one syllable, when that syllable has a um, consonant, vowel, consonant, and it is stressed, that is when we double the last consonant and add ed. Are we clear here? Okay. Thank you. Yes. That's good. Okay. So to put this into practice, let's watch some of the exercise that we have in the platform. Let's check. All right, here is the first uh, exercise about this that we already um, study. So in this case, as you may see, como pueden ver, así les debería de quedar en su, eh, ya deberíamos de estar avanzando en la sección 4. Y el primer ejercicio que tienen acá es precisamente acerca de afirmativas y negativas en pasado simple. Como ya vimos um, en el chart anterior, cuando son oraciones afirmativas, solo agregamos ED en la mayoría de casos, ¿verdad? De acuerdo a lo que veo aquí en mi paréntesis y lo que leo acá, me indica que es una oración afirmativa. Por lo tanto, cuando ustedes escriban la respuesta, solo es de agregar ED a este verbo que tengo acá. Y me quedará, on Friday night, I waited uh, for a phone call. 
Eh, luego dice, but my girlfriend, y dice, no call. El no es para indicarme que la voy a poner en negativo. Como ya vimos en el cartelito anterior, para hacer oraciones negativas, usamos el auxiliar didn't. Y como el auxiliar está precisamente diseñado para indicarme el tiempo, que en este caso es el pasado, y agregándole not de una negativa, ya no necesito conjugar el verbo. Por eso es que cuando ustedes hagan oraciones negativas en pasado simple, no van a alterar el verbo, lo van a dejar en forma infinita o simple. Entonces en esta me queda, but my girlfriend didn't call. Ya no me quedé al verbo, recuerden, ¿por qué? Hay auxiliar. I just stayed home and watched TV. Aquí sí le agregamos ED, porque todo me indica que es oración afirmativa. Como en oración afirmativa no uso auxiliar, entonces se conjuga el verbo. Y luego tenemos la siguiente. On Saturday, I, tengo el verbo visit, ese es de los mayoría, solo agrego ED, I visited my friend Frank. En la siguiente, and we talked and listened to music. Okay, so el verbo que listened. In the evening, he invited some friends over and we cooked. Cooked a great meal. Y bueno, tengo acá I. El verbo me está indicando que tengo que poner negativa esta oración. Volvemos a hacer lo mismo. Escribimos el auxiliar didn't. Y el verbo nos va a quedar siempre más infinitiva, aunque estamos ya uh, trabajando en pasado, pero recordando en oraciones negativas, es el auxiliar el que indica el tiempo. Por lo tanto, ya no altero el verbo, se deja en su forma infinita. Y nos queda, I didn't work very hard on Sunday. Y luego... A otra negativa, I didn't auxiliar study at all. Y la última, pues, es la del verbo shop, que como ya dijimos, eh, es una oración afirmativa, entonces agrego ed. Pero en el caso de este tipo de verbos, ¿cuándo vamos a duplicar la consonante? Cuando hay una consonante, vocal, consonante. ¿Y qué más? Ajá, vamos bien. Sí, tiene que haber eh, una... Se duplica la consonante cuando hay una... Eh, es un verbo de una sílaba. Por ejemplo, eh, las sílabas en inglés son los en cuanto a sonido, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, decimos shop, solo escucho un sonido, solo una sílaba. Eh, si yo digo el verbo visit. Son dos. Son dos sílabas, ¿verdad? Visit. Pero entonces... estos verbos tengo visit y tengo shop este termina consonante vocal y consonante entonces ¿por qué no duplico la t? Tiene dos sílabas. Y eso no es todo. Tiene dos sílabas y sí, puedo duplicar la última consonante. Pero para que yo haga eso, 
tiene que reunir dos condiciones. La primera es que termine en consonante vocal y consonante y que esta última sílaba lleve estrés. Pero en el caso del verbo visit, el estrés está en la primera sílaba. Visit. Uh -huh. Ahí es donde está la fuerza. Visit. Okay. Entonces, por eso no lo voy a duplicar. Si el estrés estuviera en la segunda sílaba y además de estar estresada en la segunda sílaba, cumpliera con este patrón de la consonante vocal y consonante, entonces sí puedo duplicar. Okay. Pero en este caso no, porque el estrés está en la primera. En cambio, tenemos también el shop es de una sílaba y suena estresado. Porque si no hay estrés, aunque tenga una sílaba y suene, eh, tenga la, ese patrón de la consonante vocal y consonante, no se duplica si no hay estrés. ¿Ok? Pero en el caso del verbo shop, es un verbo que suena fuerte. Es como, ah, hay estrés. Shop. Shop. Entonces, es donde, entonces es donde obedece la regla de duplicar la última consonante y agregar et shop. Bien, excelente. Uh, another example for the, the previous visit, right? Another example. Other uh, verb. Uh, uh, where dupli duplicate the letter. For example, letter. stop. Stop. Yes, stop. Ok, este también es un verbo, stop, stop, y es estresado, stop. Entonces, si queremos conjugarlo a pasado, este también tendría que duplicar, stopped. Como decir, eh, yo paré el bus, I stopped the bus, ok. Eh, y sí, para al momento de escribir en spelling, tendríamos que duplicar eh, la última consonante que es P, y agregar ed stop. Okay. The same case is cut. Perdón. Cook. Cut. Despertar. Despertar. Cortar. Cortar. Ah, cut. 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 Este es irregular. Okay. Oh, meaning que no, eh, este se, se escribe así en los tres eh, tiempos, en presente, en pasado y en el perfect. Cut, cut, cut. Él no cambia. Entonces él no sigue esa regla de agregarle ed. Y por eso case, se llaman uh, irregulares. En el case, uh -huh. uh, case go es bueno. Es, es Otro irregular, por ejemplo, el irregular. verbo go, muy buen ejemplo de un verbo irregular. No se hace esto, no. No hay una regla que me diga cómo cambiarlo, sino que él en pasado es. Uh -huh. Went. Go es went. Uh -huh. ¿Y usted tendrá alguna lista de verbos así? Claro que, que sí. pueda proporcionar para, para que veamos, vea y los estudiamos, cómo se cambia al pasado. Sí, de hecho okay. vamos a llegar a esto porque no hay una regla que seguir con estos verbos. Lo único que se puede mm -hmm. hacer es memorizarlos. Correcto. Entonces, eh, pues esto lo vamos a ver más adelante, pero sí les incluí aquí. Es esto una lista de verbos irregulares ah, eh, okay. comunes. Y uh -huh. le voy a mandar el audio. Porque ah, okay. um, para que ustedes se lo voy a mandar por WhatsApp en su momento. Tal vez el mañana o pasado. Le voy a mandar el audio de esa lista. Para que ustedes escuchen, repitan. Eh, cuando tengan chancecito de practicar. Ok, excelente teacher, gracias. Pero gracias, sí, teacher. ahí está en la presentación. Y un día de estos le voy a mandar el audio. Okay. Se los mandé okay. ya para no confundirlo, vea que digan que es tanta cosa que está mandando. <risa> Pero okay. sí. Any other question? 
Okay, so, gracias por unirse, gracias por participar y los veo mañana. Traten de no perder clases. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.